printing money is bad, mm -hmm. right? It's inflationary. Mm -hmm. uh, but borrowing printed money is insane. <laughs> In our study of money over these nine years, we kind of learned that the whole thing is... Um, smoke. Smoke and mirrors. And mirrors. And mirrors and smoke. So we have listeners around the world. What are some ideas that, that you can give to people of... Um, how do you not participate in the silliness of it all? <laughs> we, we, you know, when we have to use dollars. Well, you have ten to fifteen percent of your wealth can be devoted to playing with the silliness, but you know, you should put a bulk, the bulk of your wealth into physical tangibles to avoid all of the financial pitfalls that are associated with a fiduciary or a fictitious monetary system. And it's only it's it's a relatively new innovation. And so I'm sure that when they came out with paper money, you know, oh, what a great thing it was. It's paper. It's not so heavy. It won't tear your pockets, and you can store more of it, and all the wonderful benefits of paper. And eventually we found out that um, there's no substance in fiduciary money. You rely on other people's trust and their good faith and their positive efforts, something all three of which are in short supply. <laughs> So for me and for those who study the risks and pitfalls, physical money is the only thing that is exempt from all the nonsense that occurs with fiduciary money. There, there's just nothing else. Now, you've been on this for many, many years on this whole... Nearly 40. Yeah, on this whole idea because you really understood how it worked and how you got into gold and silver coins. But is it fair to say that it served you well? For yourself, for your family, oh, goodness, by knowing yeah. knowing what you know and, oh, yeah. and taking this taking this tact, I guess. Yeah, uh, of just saving money in the form of real money. Yeah. Has it so when my first child was born, and I I put a one thousand dollar bucket of quarters, dimes, and halves aside as a dramatic emergency measure, and let me tell you, that was a hard earned twenty eight hundred bucks that I buried into that thing. And I still have it, you know, mm -hmm. all these years later. But uh, if I were to just turn around and sell it at today's very low price, it would be worth maybe $13,000. If I were, to, if I would have sold it in 2011 when everyone was going silly nuts, let's see, what was it worth then? Wow, $35,000. Mm -hmm. So, but the 2800 bucks that I put into that bucket is still 2800 no matter what I do. And no matter what would have happened, uh, the, there's no chance that I would have lost that money unless somebody broke into the house and actually took it with them. Right. And then all through the years, I augmented and added and added and added. And I added when the price was up, and I added when the price was down, and I added when the price was in the middle, and I dollar averaged my way in over the last 40 years. Wow. So now what I have... Is mine. It's not subject to somebody else's whim. There's no counterparty risk that someone else owes me this, and maybe they can pay, and maybe they can't. And it's a secure store of wealth that I know I could pass on to the next generation of gosses, and they can build upon it. I hope I've trained them well. They'll do the same thing. Oh. Add to the pile, hmm. and intergenerationally, uh, the building up of wealth through this method. Is so well established, and and if you broaden the category to hard assets, tangibles in general, you know if you bought old guitars, old motorcycles, jewelry, art, antiques, whatever your you'd thing be in the is, same position. Right? Yes, you huh. probably would, although you wouldn't be as liquid. You know, it might be harder to sure, liquidate. sure. It's easier to sell a coin than it is to sell Much your, your forty eight. Uh, a Ford or whatever you Right, have. or yeah. your you But know, you can sell them. It just takes a while. Antique couch or your yeah. Tiffany lamp. It just or, takes a while. Yeah, your Basquiat painting. Basquiat. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so then you, what you've done, and, and and other people can do it on the same, you know, obviously not on the level that you've been able to because you've been at it 40 years. But, and I'm in the business. And you're and obviously you're right in the, in the belly of the beast there where you get to, you know, you know have first crack at a lot of stuff. Um but so then you, what you did was you just um, figured out a way how to have enough uh, dollars, these Federal Reserve notes, to do your life. 
Yeah, well, so you don't me, have to dig into that. Right. For me, it was. You don't have you know, to dig into your stash. I right? used to ask the question when it when a dime was twenty eight cents, when a silver dime was twenty eight cents. I would say to the people, look, if I could take you back to nineteen sixty four, and yeah, right, this is nineteen eighty five, so it wasn't that long ago. If I could take you back to nineteen sixty four, and you can buy all the dimes at at ten cents. How many would you buy? And for me, the answer was all of them, right? I want all of them uh, because they, I know that they're going to increase in value. But I can only work so hard and put away so much excess capital. I can only buy so many. So we hatched this plan of reaching out to individuals and saying, hey, why don't you put this stuff away and let me know where it is? That's my benefit. I place my inventory with a client in, in Omaha and then... 10 years later, 20 years later, I can call them back and say, hey, you remember that dime you bought for 28 cents? Well, it's $1. ten. Do you want to sell? And so for me, it represents um, way more than I could ever buy on my own. It's an extended inventory resource. So if I can place $50 million worth of rare coins with individual investors, and that stuff is later worth $150 million, well, not only does everybody I put them with make money, but you bet I make money when I sell them again. So that is the yeah, business, business model. model that I put into place. Clever, in the early very 80s. clever, yeah. very clever.